Vacuum pumps can come in handy for all sorts of things around the workshop and you can make a load of different accessories to go with it. In future videos we're going to be making vacuum chamber which can be used if you're making moulds out of epoxy or silicone or if you're looking to stabilise wood. Because I want to go into that in more detail we'll make that type of vacuum chamber in a future video. In this one I thought I'd show you something a little different which you mightn't have come across before. So first things first I check to see if my pump is actually running. Motor's running fine on the pump but the pump doesn't actually create any pressure. So autopsy, see what's happening with it. First thing I do is take it apart to see what's going on. From the small DC motor there's a geared mechanism which pushes a little piston inside the cylinder. At the top of the cylinder there's two valves. One valve has the valve on the outside which is held in place by a spring and this is what allows the air to go down the tube and into your car tyre. The other hole is spring loaded on the inside and has a small rubber plug which prevents air from blowing out of the cylinder. What seems to be the problem on this one was that the inlet valve was letting air back out again so it wasn't forcing the air down the hose and into the car tyre. So I simply tension up the spring by pushing it back into place and hopefully that will do the job. Everything then gets a coat of grease and I give the cylinder a bit of a sand just to get the rust off it. And once it's all screwed back together I just check to see if it's working and it seems to be pumping fine so we're set to go on with the next part of the project. My initial thought when I got this was just to reverse the polarity in the motor and to see if it would work but as you see with the valves that's not going to happen. So what we need to do is create an outlet point to connect the hose to where the air was being sucked in originally. So I check through my box of random scraps and nails and parts and I find a little brass hose barb. So in order for it to fit I just need to file it down a bit. Once I have it shaped to size I mix up a bit of epoxy and set it in place. I use a long wooden skewer to plug the hole so that if any epoxy seeps through it won't seal in the hole that we're going to be sucking the air through. To help the piece stay in place while the epoxy is setting I use a little dab of CA glue or super glue and some activator just to keep it steady so that the epoxy can set up. On the top of the pump there was a pressure gauge that came out where the air was coming out the hose and blowing into the tyre. We don't need this anymore so I cut a small piece of metal from a bottle lid to hold a spring that keeps the valve in place. I use some CA glue to initially hold this in place, then I mix up a bit of epoxy to make sure it's got a proper hold. The hose is removed and voila, we have a vacuum pump. Now, this works just the same way as it did before, blowing out where the hose was coming off. But instead, we now have a barb that we can fit a hose on so that we can direct the suction force of this pump. In order to make a mount for the motor, I take some measurements, I clamp two pieces of wood together and with a force of a bit I drill down the centre of those. This is just simply so I can take them apart and I have a nice little U shape to sit the motor in. To house this we're just working with some three quarter inch plywood cutoffs. It's just what I have kicking about, you don't need to go with anything this heavy, it's just what I have on hand. The box itself, I'm just going to butt joint together with some glue and nails. hose has a little grommet on it where it entered the plastic box of the jump start in the beginning and this I'm going to utilize I take some measurements and I drill my hole with a forcing a bit then I countersink it down to the right thickness so that this grommet will stay in place help it seed in its hole I use a little bit of heat just to soften the grommet up so that it'll pop in nice because it's kind of cold in the workshop these days. Next I take a switch that was salvaged from the power pack along with some wire 
and I connect the wires and I solder it all together and I'm the front of the box going towards the back. The power source I'm using is just a trickle charger so it has some alligator clips. I'm not going to install any connectors for this at the minute. The back piece of this I'm just going to mount with some screws so that I'll be able to open it if I need to get in. For the minute the wires are just going to be let out of the back of the box and this can be addressed when I have my power pack up and running in a few. Once the box is finalised, I fill any holes, give it a sand and a couple of coats of gloss paint. And that's the vacuum pump finished. Now the next thing is to start on the accessories for this. One of the things I've done in my life is train in herbalism and I make a lot of tinctures or plant extracts I'm making medicine from that I use for myself and family. For me this is a fascinating field of study and if people are interested in it let me know in the comments down below and we can do some videos on it in the future. What I'm going to be making here is called a Buchner or Butchner funnel which is a filtration device used under vacuum for separating liquids from solids. This can be used in a workshop for clarifying solvents and taking solids out of them but what I'm going to be using it here for today is for filtering herbal tinctures. A tincture is a very simple way of extracting the goodness out of plants with the use of a menstruum. So your menstruum is the liquid that you're going to be using to extract the ingredients from the plant. This is usually alcohol, vinegar or glycerin. In this case I've got some tinctures made from motherwort and vervain extracted with vodka. To start with we're going to prepare the vacuum vessel. This is a large wide mouth one litre jar and on the top of this I need to make a support for the funnel that's going to go in. So I take some of the same 3 quarter inch plywood, drill a hole in the centre, place in a cork. The cork is what's going to create our nice airtight seal around the stem of the funnel. To attach the pump to the vacuum flask I'm going to use a valve from a tubeless car tyre. These can be picked up in any auto factors for a couple of euro. Any sort of vacuum chamber that you want to use. These are a super simple and reliable way of connecting them to your pump. On the funnel itself, they come with ridges on the outside. This is to allow a little bit of air to go out of the bottle when you're pouring liquids into it. So I need to take these off with a knife. I tape up the lid and give the piece of wood a coat of lacquer just to protect it from any spills that might be happening. And once that's done, we could literally stop at this point and use the funnel as is. For a filter, I'm just going to use some standard coffee filter papers. The only problem with using the funnel straight like this is that you have a very small area for the vacuum to suck all the liquid out of your material. As soon as the filter paper gets damp it becomes soft and the amount of pressure created by the vacuum actually bursts the filter paper in this instance. But if you want to use it like this I experiment with two filter papers and it works just fine albeit a bit slower. Now a Buchner funnel, a Buchner funnel, a Buchner, 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 this type of funnel is characterised by having a large flat perforated surface so that you've got a much wider area for the vacuum to suck through. So I'm going to create an insert for this. This could be done quite simply by gluing it in but because this needs to be food grade as I'll be ingesting the material that goes through it, I didn't want to glue it in place. So what I do instead is I take a small HDP food grade snap lid container and I'm going to cut this down to size and make an insert which will rest in the bottom of the funnel. This will also make cleaning it much easier. Once it's all cut and shaped to size the next thing is to form it into shape. So I'm just going to heat it up with a hot air gun until it starts getting soft. Then I place it into the funnel and I start getting an idea of the kind of angles that it needs to set at. This takes a little bit of finagling over some time, heating up a tab, holding it in place with a steel ruler 
and I re re keep repeating this process until I have a nice fit. Do mind your fingers, folks, because this gets really hot really quickly. Once I have the piece perforated, I go over with a flame just to smooth off any of the edges. This will take away any of those little snaggy bits of plastic that might tear the wet paper filter when I have it in place. An added advantage of this I found out is that it uses a quarter of the paper out of wood if I was just using the funnel directly. As I get to cut the coffee filters in half and all you have to do is seal the bottom edges, the material will hold the filter paper in place. So thanks for watching folks, I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for some more videos. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.